Hello, my name is Chris Maynard from CMI Studios. Today, I'll be teaching a tutorial in Digital Domains Nuke 4.0. Right now, I'll show you how to turn a simple summer image like this into a winter scene like this. Let's go get started. First, let me delete all my existing nodes, except for my source images. My one source image, if I select the one key by selecting its node, it'll bring up its current viewer. You'll see that the image is a little too large and it's got data inside that I do not need. Let me go and reposition my window, shrinking the corner, and tapping the H key to home the view. Let's move my viewer node out of the way, and let's start to crop and reformat this image. First, let's reformat it for NTSC. By right-clicking on its node, I can go into the Transform menu and select Reformat. You'll see by default, NTSC is selected. I'm going to go ahead and check black outside and preserve bounding box. Hit OK. Next, let me crop my image so that it actually fits into my view. I'm going to go ahead and right click on the node again so that my new node goes in between my reformat node and my source image and select crop. I'm going to hit the reposition button, scale my window a bit so I can see it better and start to move the bounding box overlay to the position I need. It's starting to get good. Just want to move it down a little bit more to get some of that ground in there. That'll work. Check OK. And I'll reposition my window one more time, hit the Home key. And now I will actually start to extract the snow layer from this existing data. Well, I see that the highlights are mainly in this color green, so I'm going to go ahead and add a color corrector to my reformat node by going into the color menu and selecting the correct like that. On the master settings, I'm going to go ahead and check the contrast way up so I can start to extract these highlights. Next, I'll play with the gamma a little bit to sort of isolate those highlights a little bit more. You can also move the gain back and forth to preserve its opacity for the snow layer. I'm going to leave it about like this for now. We're going to have to come in and change it anyway. I'll select OK for now, move my color correct node over, and then right click on the color correct node and add a new one from the color menu called saturation. I'm going to go ahead in and lower my saturation all the way down to zero. Now you can see that I've extracted a nice black and white image of a snow layer. I'll go ahead and hit OK and start to work on its new path. The next new path is going to be the main background image that actually lays underneath of the snow layer. To do so, I'm going to click in the dead area once to deselect any of my nodes, right click, and go into the merge and add a merge node. I'll wire A into my reformat and wire B into my saturation. While this is selected, I'll go ahead and tap the one key one more time so that I can see my new composite. I'll check the OK button because the defaults are working fine. Now what I want to do is sort of isolate the color of the background to remove any more green. So let me go ahead and move this over to keep organized. Click in the dead area one more time and right click. This time I'm going to go to the color menu and select Hue Correct. A visible graph is now available from this window. I'm going to go ahead and wire my Hue Connect in and select the one key from or wire this in. And now my current view is still selected, as you can see like here. Let me just reorganize it a little bit. What I want to do is pull the greens out. I'm going to go ahead and select my first green and start to drag it out like this. My auburns, I'm going to start to pull out slightly. And then the background color, which is more in the blue side because it's going back in distance, I'm going to go ahead and drag this out a little bit further. Restore some of my greens like this. Now that's starting to look pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and check OK for now. Now what I want to do is I want to adjust my snow layer so it looks a little bit better. I'll go into my color corrector and start moving around the settings until I feel satisfied. If I wanted to add more snow, I could simply just adjust the gamma to bring it into a completely snowy scene. In this case, I want it to be a little bit wet, like it's just starting to snow. That's looking good. Now what I want to do is create a snow layer, or a cloud layer, that actually 
covers this mountain. Let's go ahead and add a simple node called filter glow and leave the default values as is. Next, we need to create a mask for this so that it only covers this area right here. To do so, we need to add a Bezier curve between the over node and the glow node. So I'll select the over node, click once on the Bezier curve, zoom out, and start drawing the area that I want to be affected. I'm going to hold down the Control and Alt key and start putting down points. What you see is a solid white area covering the area that I need. Well, what I wanted to do is this be the mask of the glow node. To do so, inside of the Bezier channel editor, I'm going to go ahead and drop down this menu, select new, and I'm going to type in cloud and the word layer. I'll hit OK, select OK from the Bezier menu, go into my glow node, open its parameters, and select cloud layer from the first drop down menu. Now you can see that it's starting to bend exactly the way I want. Now there's two ways to adjust this. In this case, I want to go ahead into my Bezier curve and add some more complicated effects. I'm going to hit the H key to home in and you'll see that I have sort of a hard line where the cloud is. Well, I don't want it to be too hard. I want it to be a gradient. So what I can do is inside the color tab, I can select from the ramp node or from the ramp dropdown, linear. And you'll see that you get these two points, top and bottom. I'm going to reposition these two points so that they have a nice gradient fall off. Now, to, to see the difference between the two effects, you can do one of two things. You can turn this node on, on or off, or set the viewer to have a one two situation. In this case, I'm going to go into my glow node, going to the node menu, and just hit disable back and forth. Now I'm getting the cloud layer that I wanted to cover the mountain. I'll go ahead and click OK. The next thing I want to do is composite my snowstorm that I created in third party particle engine. What we'll do is we'll add another glow or another merge node by selecting the glow node, right clicking, going into the merge menu, and selecting the first option, which is merge. I'll reconnect my snow layer, and tapping the one key will bring my viewer into the proper area. Now what I want to do is add a directional blur to make it look like the snow is actually moving. In this case, I'll just right click on my snow layer because it's the top node in succession, go into the filter menu, and select directional blur. From the blur menu, I can select from the first drop down, linear, so it looks like it's going from one direction, and then from the angle, I'll go ahead and select zero. The default blur length of five is starting to look good. Now, our image started from here, and now it looks like this. This is a simple way to turn a simple stock photograph into something that you could use. For more information on Digital Domain's new product, please go to d2software.com. Thanks again.